Broadway Marketplace. Please state your names and spell your last names for the record. George Hickey, H I C K E Y. Thank you. Charles Bugas, B O U G A S. Thank you. Richard Sabunjan, S A B O U N J I A N. Thank you. Tyler Bubinick, B U B E N I K. Licensing investigator. Thank you. Go ahead. While performing a field investigation, an underage individual working with the Cambridge License Commission was able to procure a six pack of beer on August 15, 2019, <coughs> at 2 30 p.m. at Broadway Marketplace, located at 468 Broadway. I picked up the underage operative from the Cambridge Police Department on the afternoon of August 15. I collected all items from the individual so that there was nothing on their person and gave them one marked $20 bill. We reviewed the License Commission's compliance check guidelines and the individual signed the agreement of participation, waiver of liability, and guidelines. The underage individual entered the establishment and I waited a few seconds before entering as well. Observing from inside the premise, I was able to see them pick up a six pack of beer, bring it to the register, pay for the item, and leave the premise. I followed the operative outside and retrieved the six pack and changed immediately. I also asked if the cashier who sold them the six pack asked for identification and the operative informed me they had not. I returned the six-pack and change, informed the cashier that they had sold the six-pack to an underage person, and requested my marked $20 bill back, which they returned. I then filled out inspection form number 977, which was signed, and a copy was left with the establishment. Thank you. I just want to say that I have operated Broadway Marketplace, uh, the front end of Broadway Marketplace, under uh, um, the previous license holder, uh, D&J Lifter Partners, for uh, 25 years. I don't believe we had ever had an incident in all that time. For the last 10 years, I've had, I, I purchased the license from John Lichter for the last 10 years. I have been the manager of that license, and we have not had an incident. We have we, we take this responsibility very seriously. We have an incredibly tough alcohol policy. Similar to some of the other uh, people here, we have a DataQuest monitoring service come in on a regular routine basis to check our cashiers. If a cashier is, we, we have a very positive record if a cashier is found to have sold alcohol and not checked an ID of someone who is of age, by the way, they are terminated. This particular, I have, <laughs> we're known in the area for having an extremely tight liquor policy. We have. We have scores of really angry customers. I have emails from 70-year-old Harvard professors complaining that we check their ID every time they come in the store. I have Yelp reviews from 30 and 40-year-old individuals complaining that we shouldn't be checking IDs so rigidly. We have, um, I, I have one in particular gentleman who wrote a, an email to me complaining about the fact that we carded five people in a group of five people because one, one of the people was purchase, purchasing alcohol and we carded all five of them and refused the sale of alcohol. So it's very important to us. We know that we're, we're held to a high standard and we respect that. That said, I just want to, I'm curious to know, um, we never, we ne you came into the store and you spoke with George, the store manager. I don't believe you addressed the cashier directly. And we never saw the individual who came in to purchase the alcohol. And you said that you witnessed the, 
You witnessed the sale of alcohol? I'm sorry, was that a yes? Yes. So when, when you came back in the store to find the $20 bill, you didn't even know which cash register the $20 bill was in. George had to go through three different cash registers to count out 20s to look for a marked bill. So, I, and uh, the, is that a, if, if that's a question you need to let him answer. I'm sorry. The operative told me which lane he checked out in, and that's who I turned the six pack to. And then we couldn't actually find the 20. We were pulling out the $20 bills, and uh, I don't remember if it was the cashier at first or if it was you at first. It was you at some point, at least. But at least initially, whoever it was couldn't find the marked bill. So then I had them check the other tills. So it wasn't because I didn't know which cashier used the checkout, it's because they couldn't produce the marked twenty dollar bill at first, so we were checking all. Okay. I'm sorry. Is your testimony that you went to the cashier who you observed selling the alcohol? Right. Okay. I think you said it initially. Did the operative say that the cashier asked for ID? Uh, no. Didn't ask for ID at probably market. So. We have a policy that states that every individual purchasing alcohol, regardless of age, needs to be checked for ID. So we determined, based on what you told us, that that cashier violated that policy. And we terminated her employment immediately. Um, and I'm just... I'm just curious because, and I'm not an attorney obviously, but it seems like there are an awful lot of people here who were set up that day. <coughs> it seems to me from, from what I, from what we saw that day when we checked the video cameras, this individual was about my height and he was about six foot two. And he was about that officer's build. And he did not look like he was he was under the age of twenty or thirty. But it, it, I'm curious to know how many people how many people you visited that day and how many violations were were cited. If the board says that's relevant. So on that day I think we went to six and five were cited. I can actually check. I'll check the date on the reports here, and then we'll go from there. So you were on the agenda. Uh, yeah. Everyone so that 15. was everyone that was visited and sold to a minor was cited. Yeah. Right. And you know, just for in terms of clarification, no one here was set up. Well, these they are, call it a sting, right? No, these are these are compliance checks of which all of you, Ms. Courtney, you can either be quiet or take it outside. I didn't say anything. Yes, you did. Sure no, did. I did not. Certainly did. Nope. You sure did, and if you're going to continue interrupting the hearing, you can leave. I didn't interrupt. I didn't you are interrupting now. Thank you. These are compliance checks that are done pursuant to the law. These are compliance checks of which all of you received notice at the beginning of the year, which were published in the Chronicle. So these are compliance checks that can happen and that do happen and that happen for exactly this reason. I can tell you that it is quite concerning to me that there are so many of these package stores that are failing these compliance checks. This is why I'm so perplexed. So this is not a setup. This is a wake-up call for all of you. So may I answer the question? Five of six were violations. I just, I, I, I just want to tell you that you, that the actions that you take affect many people's livelihood. And as I mentioned earlier, we take this responsibility very seriously. And there's nothing we can say. We just ask for leniency based on our prior history. Thank you. So this particular LLC was approved in 2017. Well, I do know that you have been... 20, no, 2010 is when I got the Yeah, the, uh, I'm just saying the LLC changes were approved, right? No, no the, the liquor license was um, 2009 or 10. 
was transferred to the LLC. Okay. There's no disciplinary history. Um, again, and for the same reasons, I think I think this is a very serious offense. And I agree, what we do affects people's livelihoods, but so does with every business in this um, every section 15 and this is a public safety issue so again I would vote consistent with what we voted and I would vote for a violation two day suspension so the, the difference here as in the difference in the, uh, the one that we held under advisement uh, I think it's four square mm -hmm. is that they do self-initiated integrity checks I think they do everything they can to ensure that you know they comply with the policy and when they found out that the policy provided to then they fire the individual, not unlike some of the other ones who agreed to two days. My point is that I think it's a clear violation and obviously a dire public safety concern, but I think that the suspension should be one day. So I, I took the other one under advisement because our guidelines say that when they're asked for ID, the they author... They have to leave. I it doesn't say they have to. It says they should. And I know that there's some cases which I haven't had an opportunity to review in terms of how that should is being interpreted. My only point in mentioning it was that I was going to make the same argument as far as a suspension in mm -hmm. that case, um, that it should not be the same two days that everyone else had because of the measures that they already have in place with the, the self... Uh, the integrity checks that they have in place through uh, data quests. Through, through but I mean, we have place. the one before where they have, where they have had, um, you know, very strict policies, and yet we voted a two-day suspension. For me, the integrity checks is the, the different. The, the, so I think a one-day suspension is more appropriate. I can, I can. We can produce the. We are. We're voting now. Oh. I'll take it under advisement, but I'm not ready to do it today on this, uh, do it one day on this one. So we'll take it under advisement. Thank you. Thank and if you, you do want to give that stuff that you referenced to, we'll make sure. Uh, you, you mentioned stuff about emails, and I kept seeing you sort of pull them up. I didn't know uh, yeah. you wanted to give them to us. <laughs> But if yeah, you, we'll show you the email. If you do want to give us the yeah. documents that you referenced, then we'll take them. That's okay. what I'm saying. And the policy here. Everything, give her everything. Yeah, but I need this back. All right. These are, these are um, employee so signed copies um, when we hired employees. You can give them to Chief Boyer and show well, the copies. Upstairs. Okay.